What is going on, guys? Welcome to Extreme Daily Drivers, where we are always balling on a budget and wrenched in our garage. It is another Toaster Tuesday. I got my horrific Washington football team on in the background. Can't show you too much because, you know, YouTube will come after me. They'll try to demonetize my channel for showing another channel on the TV. But, man, I'll tell you what. You want to get in a bad mood, go ahead and watch the Washington football team play football. It's, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe how much more... I know than every single one of those players that are on the field because it's just absolutely abysmal, abysmal team right now. But uh, anyway, I digress. Take a second though, go down in the comments, let me know what your favorite NFL football team is. Don't even tell me about college. I don't want to hear about college. I hate college everything. So if it's not pro, I don't want to know about it. Go ahead and put your professional NFL football team down in the comments. Let me know who your favorite team is. But anyway, moving on. Let me show you what I got. Let me show you what I got coming up in the next three videos because uh, I've been stashing some stuff here over the last couple weeks. It's pretty impressive. So check this out. All right. What you're looking at here, man, is a ton of audio stuff ready to get installed in the box. We have a sweet backup camera. Man, I've had this. I think I got it for my birthday, man. I've had this for a long time. But I didn't have a receiver or a car stereo that would work with it. So you know we got the awesome high kitty 9-inch display in there. If you guys watched last week's video, you know all about that. So this guy is going to be getting installed soon. Look forward to that. All right. So we also have, check this out, some base blockers for the speakers in the dash. So I've already blown out one of my dash speakers. I'm not exactly sure if I did it by playing music too loud. It happened when my windshield got replaced, so I'm not sure if somehow water or some sort of substance got in there and damaged the speaker on my passenger side. But whatever the case is, I should have installed these a long time ago. These are base blockers so that no low frequency goes to those essentially tweeters in the dashboard. We're going to be installing these. I got these installation rings. If you watched my uh, how to replace your speaker video I did like three years ago on the Sign XP, you know about these rings. These things are perfect. I got five and a quarter for the rear. So uh, yeah, we'll be using these. Of course, I got my Easy Connects too to go with that. All right, so awesome. All right, so let's move on to the speakers. So I don't know anything about car audio, nothing at all. Anything that I know, I learned like 25 years ago. So back in the day, I remember this guy had Infinity reference speakers in his car and they sounded amazing. So I've kind of always wanted some ever since. So I spent a little bit of money and got myself some three and a half inch for the dash, five and a quarter for the rear, and then move these to the side for a second, we'll get those in a minute. Six and a half, is that what these are? Six and a half or six, six, yeah, six and a half. Six and a half for the doors. So, uh, very excited. This is gonna be a huge upgrade. If you guys, like I said, watch my older video, you know that I'm running some really, really inexpensive Pioneer speakers in the door and in the dash. So, uh, this is gonna be a huge upgrade, man. These things are beautiful. I took them out of the box uh, when I received them just to kind of look at them, and man, the, what an upgrade. Can't wait to get these guys installed. And I also got some of these foam kind of rings. Uh, they go around the speakers as well as behind the magnet. Never ever used these before. Pretty inexpensive, so I thought I'd give them a shot. Now these are four, six and a half, I believe. Yep, they're four, six and a half. Uh, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to modify these to work with five and a quarter as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, let me show you what I got underneath here. So underneath here, we got ourselves some basically Dynamat. Uh, I don't know how much is in here, maybe enough to do the car, but we're not gonna be doing the entire car. We're just gonna be doing most of the car or the areas that are definitely gonna be maybe rattling under, you know, heavy use. <laughs> so gonna be doing some Dynamatting, so look forward to that. And lastly, lastly, we got ourselves an old school bazooka tube. That's right, so back in the day, I had a Honda Civic, and when I say back in the day, I'm talking about the mid-90s, all right? I had a Honda Civic, I had one of these, it was a 10-inch. I got it installed for me, because I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. 
by uh, this place called Circuit City, which is just like Best Buy. It's actually better than Best Buy, but they wound up going out of business. But uh, we're gonna be installing one of these with an amp, which is really the only thing I'm missing right now. I need to order an amp, I need to get an amp kit, because this is a passive bass tube, which, mean is, which means it's not amplified. And uh, yeah, this is an eight inch and should be providing some awesome bass to our little system. All right, so one last thing I want to show you guys is this kind of a uh, tire stencil thing that I made here. I told you guys a while ago I got some tire stencils off of eBay. They were like $12. Here they are over here. All right, and essentially all these things are stickers. You put them on your tires, you spray paint over the sticker, and it's going to leave a, uh, in this case, the word Nitto on your tire. The thing about these is kind of a one-use sort of thing. You use them once and then they get thrown out and you never get to use them again. So I went to this place called Hobby Lobby and I got this weird kind of foam. I don't even know what it is. It was 99 cents. <laughs> so I put the stencil on there and I cut it out. And essentially what you do is you hold it up to the tire like this, all right? And then you spray paint it. So um, before I can entertain even doing this, I have to fix what we're gonna do today and that is the scraping issue. Okay, so I am scraping like a mother <laughs> right here on the front driver and the rear passenger. So we're gonna do whatever it takes today to fix this problem so we're not running into this anymore. All right, so quick update to the game. The Redskins somehow scored a touchdown. Let's see if they can get this extra point. Probably won't because they stink so much, uh, but they got it. So it's 10-14, and at least they're making it respectful. They'll probably lose by two points just to make it like super annoying. But anyway, okay, back to the car. So earlier this week, I was actually able to install this 15 millimeter spacer. So what is cool about this 15 millimeter spacer is it replaced the little five millimeter and the little three millimeter that I had on there, which added up to eight. So we went from eight to 15. And I love the way it looks, it looks awesome. And it also allows me to use these little lug ends right here. Remember I couldn't use these before because my studs were too long. Well, I can use these now with this 15 millimeter spacer. So pretty hyped on that, it's working great. The problem is, is that we're rubbing up here. Now I know what you're saying. <laughs> if you don't want to rub, get rid of your 15 millimeter spacers or jack your car up. Now you could do that, okay? That's the easy way out, man. But we're not doing the easy way out. I could also space the fenders, okay? That's another option. Or I could add even more negative camber to the front. But since I got that alignment done a couple weeks ago, I really like the way the car's driving and handling. I don't want to mess with that. So we're going to try to bend the fender a little bit today and hopefully get rid of this super annoying scrape. All right, so I think we can see exactly where the problem is, right? If we get up close here, and I got a flashlight, so I'm trying to make it so you guys can actually see. But yeah, you see all that black tire stuff right there? Makes sense too, right? Because it's the very top of the arch. So that is the issue. Now, you may look at this and say, well, you know, they, they kind of look rolled already, and they are. The previous owner did roll the fenders with a baseball bat. And I've made a little adjustments here and there to this, but um, it's not flat enough, I can tell you that right now. So we are going to go ahead and see what we can do with the edge of this, hopefully get it a little bit flatter. All right, so I want you to check this out. There is a significant amount of room here, I got my finger kind of wedged in there, uh, that this still can go flat. So we are going to take a rubber mallet to start and see if we can kind of smack this in a little bit more to really kind of flatten it out so that we aren't rubbing. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> All right, update. <laughs> I took my rubber mallet here and focused kind of on this area here. And then of course, on the other side of the fender, I used a piece of wood covered in a microfiber towel so not to ruin the paint. Um, I may have made a slight improvement, but man, there's still, as far as I'm concerned, there's still a lot of room to go here. We can do way better. And while smacking this, the little corner light popped out, <laughs> banging all around as I'm hitting this fender. And these fenders are super thin, man, like crazy thin. Um, which makes me <laughs> want to keep going at this because I know how thin they are. Um, and I think what I need to do, I, I, I can do one or two things right now. I can get an angle grinder out and I can just grind this down with a flap disc and grind the hell out of it, and that'll really flatten it. Or I can get some pliers and maybe crimp it in more. They make special 
uh, pliers that actually do this. I don't have a pair, but I mean, I just wonder how much better I can make this. Uh, well, let's see what I can do. All right, check this out, man. I got an awesome result using the pliers. Look how nice and thin this is now. I mean, I can still get my finger in there, but it's very, very small. And look how I was able to kind of make it uniform from this tab all the way over to this arch here. I'm really happy with this. I don't think you can do any better. And let me show you how I was doing it. Essentially, all I did was take some channel locks and then put a thin microfiber towel in its jaws like this. I made my way around and I made sure the bottom of the jaw was flat against this arch as I went around. And man, look, the fender still looks good. Super happy with that result. I think that fixed our problem. All right, guys, I've got the wheel back on and I'm super happy with this result. I can just feel the difference. I can come over here, put my hand on this, and man, it is super thin and it's definitely solved my problem. Now, I can also feel a little bit of the paint flaking off. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that and maybe touch it up on the back side so it doesn't get totally out of control. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not all that worried about the paint on this car. It's probably gonna get painted or wrapped in the near future. So if that flakes a little bit, I can hit it with some touch up and it's not gonna break my heart. Now, you can see the wheel on here and the lug nuts like I was describing before. Man, doesn't that look so much better? Awesome. All right, man, we're not finished yet. We gotta address the scraping, which is really bad, on passenger rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car around and I'll show you where the issue is. All right, so I got the rear wheel off here to show you what we're working with and to show you what I worked on earlier in the week. The biggest thing I did was installing these extended studs here in the rear. Now, I really needed them back here because just with the wheel alone, well, I think I had a uh, three, millimeter, three millimeter spacer. Um, man, the lug nuts were barely biting on the studs. So I had these extended studs. I wanted to get them installed. I knew it was going to be kind of a pain in the butt. You got to take the drum off the brake and then you have to remove the hub from the car. And it did wind up taking me several hours to get it all done. You have to press these in or use the old lug nut slash uh, impact gun trick, which I was able to press in three of these with my little uh, Harbor Freight press. But then the fourth one I had to use the lug nut trick uh, to get it on there. But Super happy to have this done, something I really, really needed to get done. But now we are scraping like crazy. So in the back, I have eight millimeters of spacers on here right now. I got a five and a three. And I know what you're saying, once again, dude, if you are worried about rubbing, why in the world do we have eight millimeters of spacer back here? Well, that's an excellent, excellent question. <laughs> I actually have a really good answer for you. So these studs, Okay, I think they are 15 millimeters longer than stock. It's either 15 millimeters longer or 20. Whatever the case is, when our lug nuts are installed, as so, okay, they go on something like this, okay, the way these work is a key goes in the center. So, let me grab this over here to give you a better demonstration. The key goes into the center of the lug nut, okay, and that's how you tighten it. Now the problem was, these studs are so long that the key was not able to sit into the lug nut enough. I mean, it was literally like this. So that is not good. I can't tighten them all the way down the way I want to if the key cannot fully be engaged into the lug nut. So I actually had to add some space. It was either that or saw these guys off and I didn't feel like doing that. So here is the tire. And I hope you can see that line, right? This line here that is just wearing away on it. Um, actually, did a lot of highway driving the other day. And yeah, it's scraping like a mother, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty bad. When I hit big bumps, man, it, it sounds like my fender is going to get torn off the car. So um, we have to fix this, especially on this passenger side. For whatever reason, it's really, really bad over here. So we have to address it. So again, we have to take a look at this lip. And man, I can just feel with my hand, it is probably, well, I even stick my head under there, it is, it's probably this much. I mean, uh, this was allegedly rolled by the previous owner, but these are thicker back here, and I think they're gonna be harder for us to uh, get rolled properly. Holy cow, I mean, uh, if it was ever rolled, it was barely rolled. I mean, are you kidding me? This has just been beating up my tires. Now this, this metal is significantly stronger, thicker, whatever you want to call it, than what we had in the front. 
So, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it with pliers. I guess we'll start that way and see if we'll be able to do it, but I think we're going to have to use a hammer. Uh, it's going to take some force to straighten this guy out. Man, that was going too easy. <laughs> it's going way too easy. <laughs> now, before I show you what happened, let me give you a game update. It is 10-17. Skins are still losing. Or, I'm sorry, the Washington football team is still losing. Uh, we are into the fourth quarter, but still lots of time to play. And still lots of time to play. Now, like I told you, I went ahead and grabbed the pliers. And really quickly, I was getting an awesome result. So I decided I was just going to keep going and just, just so amazed by how well this is working. And it worked really well. I think I've solved my scraping issue, but I may have created a small issue. <laughs> the fender is flat under there, man. Let me show you. I used the pliers just like I did before. And man, I'm telling you, it worked. It worked fantastic. It's super flat. I don't think I can get any flyer than that, man. It looks really, really good. I think I fixed my problem. So now the issue that I kind of created was on this side of the fender. I don't know if it's going to come up on camera. But yeah, I kind of made some crinkle plier marks along my fender. Let me see if I can give you a better light. Can you see I'm afraid to put the LED on it because like it's gonna like really show up or really disappear. Um, can you see that? <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, man. But uh, yeah, there's definite definite signs of obvious fender tampering going on by yours truly. Um, I will say it is pretty minimal. I mean, this car's got lots of problems. That's not the only problem on this car, so it's not breaking my heart or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. This is what happens. <laughs> this is what happens. I'll be honest with you. I hit some bumps on the highway. I thought my fender was, like, broken off the other day. <laughs> so I guess this really isn't too bad. Can you see the reflection of the LED? The, the ripple kind of there along the edge? Yeah, man. That's that's what happens. You wanna you wanna play the game, you gotta pay the price. So I got the wheel back on there and man it definitely definitely huge improvement. I don't think I'm gonna have the same kind of rubbing issues I was having. Um, so I'm super happy about that. So when I had the hubs off to install the extended studs, I also added more negative camber to the rear. I used the two washers on the bottom trick instead of the one. If you guys remember, I did a video on how to get free negative camber a couple weeks ago, and I initially put two washers in. I thought it was too much. I took two out and left one in. Thought that was a good amount, and uh, decided to add a little bit more, uh, mainly because I like the way it looks. But, <clears throat> after driving the car, I really like the way it handles. It handles great. I told you the other day, I did a lot of highway driving. I was really, really concerned that with the negative camber in the rear, the car was going to be really, really twitchy on the highway, like at speeds. Not the case at all. It felt more planted than ever. Uh, just making turns, the thing handles much, much better. I said to myself, if I get this fender, scrubbing, rubbing issue fixed, then maybe I'll get rid of the negative camber and just go back the way it was. But after driving it, I really like the negative camber, man. I am keeping it. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'll give you a quick in-game update. It's the fourth quarter. Skins came back, tied it up 17-17. So if you don't know anything about what's going on in this game, they're actually playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh's undefeated. I think they're 11-0. And if the Redskins can win, they'll remain tied in first place with the New York Giants, which would be awesome. Give them an opportunity to maybe even make the playoffs, even though they'll get smoked in the first round. We all know that. But it would be nice to have just a small bit of success on this horrific season. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm pretty sure we fixed our rubbing issue. Now, was it at a price? Maybe, but uh, I'll tell you this much. If this fixed my problem down here on the passenger side, I will repeat the same steps on the driver's side. Just be a little bit more careful, and hopefully I won't get this wrinkle in the fender well. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm really happy with the result. I think I can actually space these out even more, which makes me killer excited. <laughs> So anyway, guys, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are excited about the upcoming videos. 
They're going to be awesome. This thing is going to be sounding sick. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time. Later.